Hello, everyone. I'm Sam Ekman of Gold Derby. Here with me is Marina Toybina, the costume designer for Beauty and the Beast, a 30th celebration. Marina, this, you know, the animated film is obviously iconic, and it's why we're celebrating it. And everyone knows these characters. They know what Belle looks like in her blue and white dress. They know the golden ball gown at the end. So where do you begin with your design process when you have to adapt something right. that is so infamous? Um, I mean, it's an incredible bl blueprint to have. Yeah, so that makes it a little bit easier. Um, a lot of research, a lot of conversation, um, <clears throat> very transparent conversation as to what has been done, um, what, what was the goal, um, and, and definitely, there was a lot of back and forth between myself and John Chu trying to figure out what is the creative way to go about this. And also, like you mentioned, like a way to celebrate, but at the same time, bring something new to the audience. Um, and I think I spent months just doing research to see, you know, um, what has Broadway done? You know, what are some of the traveling companies have done um, down to high schools, middle schools, how people adapted the characters, what techniques were used. Um, and then from there, being able to kind of draw influences, of course, from the original animation and um, down to studying their Pantones, uh, breakdown of the characters, the right period frame, all those things went into like huge consideration. And then from there, we had the, the initial conversations as what do we do that's different? Um, and I think I probably did over a hundred different renderings throughout the entire show just to figure out what are the right elements we're going to use in the characters, details, color pantomes, what can I bring from the film that's recognizable, refreshing, safe, but at the same time, of course, do something our way and innovative. Yeah. And because this is uh, presented in a different format right. as the celebration, mm -hmm. a lot of pieces have different functions like that you know bell here is not uh waltzing in her ball gown she's right. her comes out to play guitar in it so if you have like a different uh mode it has to operate in how does that affect the design um for me it was really like diving deep into our casting and highlighting um our cast as how they're going to portray the characters kind of understanding their narrative as well as what's already existing, um, how can I tell my story? Uh, for me, it was important to be so selective in my details and my textiles, um, to make the costumes mobile. You know, we're, <clears throat> we're not doing this in a stagnant zone. They do have to perform. Um, so a lot of it was kind of diving into my previous years of work and um, <clears throat> bringing the best team together to really like format this like unique platform of how we're going to have these come alive. Um, the big thing for me was to never hide our characters, to never hide our talent. So I didn't go into like the masking or, you know, kind of building these grand costumes besides the beast. Um, it, it was important for me to really like show the story here that we're being um, introduced to these incredible iconic, you know, cast members and also let them tell like their side and their interpretation of the character. So from there, a kind of balance between who was casted, how do I bring this to life? And what was also important for the directors and the producers um, and um, Hamish, our director, how is he going to shoot this so that I can get the best out of everybody and then bring it to the stage? And I imagine, you know, in terms of not hiding actors, that right. must be tricky for the enchanted object right. uh, characters because they can... <laughs> you know, easily just turn into like a big box that is very right. cumbersome. So how did you work with the proportions on those? Um, for me, a lot of it was just um, working with textile, first and foremost, kind of focusing on the soft goods of the designs. And then from there, being able to add those like unique elements of being able to object objectify a costume by us going in like Lumiere, for instance, a couple months went into that drape, you know, everything on his costume was hand draped for me to achieve that candle swirl, to achieve those details through textile first. And then I went through and added the elements of fabricated elements out of foam or sculpted candles or anything else to enhance the costume. But the base of every single costume started with fabric. I, I didn't want to dive straight into almost like let's create like a giant clock you know it was more so what richness and what textile and depth and detail can I bring into these costumes again make them mobile make them durable but at the same time um then embellish them with all the beautiful details so I kind of did it backwards 
I really appreciated on the the Lumiere costume that Martin Short was able. He had the freedom to use his hands right. and arms because so often you see, you know, people. I, I know I did that in high school and had to, right. you know, everyone gets stuck <laughs> right. up there. Um, and that was and also, yeah, and also a lot of that was due to my research as well. I saw all the different renditions of these incredible characters, and I felt like it was kind of all stuck in the same element. And I was like, what can I do? I challenged myself. I challenged my team, you know, um, even with Lumiere's costume, there was like so many special hidden moments in there. I found this beautiful, beautiful gold fabric, metallic um, satin that we then had a, like almost an imprinted feather inside that you couldn't really tell, um, but it was deep inside his swirl. So it's like all these little things mattered so much just to have a different take on these characters, tell a different story and also um, kind of challenge ourselves in the way we were constructing all these costumes and, and doing something different um, by not even relying too much on technology and like going back to the old school way of like figuring out everything through trade pattern and technique. Mm. And, and you, you're talking a lot about the the textiles. For me, I think those um, enchanted object costumes, they have, they're like an explosion of color. I think they're probably right. the biggest, boldest use of color in this whole special. Uh, how did you look at those characters in terms of that and, and utilizing the color? I mean, I always fabric shop myself. So I have to feel and see and kind of understand what makes sense to me, how to mix my textiles. I'm not scared to take risks between like using upholstery and then going to like um, thrifting and figuring out all those details that I can use to make the costumes unique. Um, so again, like I had so many different samples in front of my eyes and being able to kind of feel everything and understand um, what can I do to bring the vibrance out? You know, when we're talking about Cogsworth costumes, a lot of it is set in brown tones and like kind of these age golden tones. So I went in a slightly different direction. You know, I still use the muted aged effect, but then I brought in my teals and my coppers and um, I then I gave it, you know, richness with my aged golds. So I think for me, it was being able to understand what textiles I'm working with, which fabrics I'm going to combine to create this, you know, illusion of the characters. And then again, like accessorize it with that just like smart detailing that went into like really having the characters come to life. I've really loved uh, Mrs. Potts costume right. uh, for Shania Twain, <laughs> because not only is it a difficult task of like, how do we make a, a teapot that's right. mobile, but you have that version. And then she also has to be in a sleek, you know, gorgeous ball gown version of that uh, for her title song. So how did you sort of make two looks that had to coexist as the same character? Um, with that particular costume, for me, it was almost starting backwards. Where is the reveal? Which parts have to come off? And at the same time, the important element is to not lose our character, to not ever take her out of the element of what this is, because we have this continuous story storyline that's kind of going through all the characters. So um, I was very careful about my base fabrics first. Uh, what tones am I going to use? How am I going to combine the lightness and the darkness? Yet at the same time, I pulled a lot of original Pantones from the animated. So I never wanted to lose my purples, my blues, um, my pearls, um, especially when it portrays to her and like what she's representing as a teapot. So I started with the corset first, then left into the skirt and kind of tried to see what my balance was. And then from there, we fabricated a teapot that I thought would be a little bit more on the feminine side. I didn't want to oversize um, the the actual like Shania's beautiful figure that we were working with. So I wanted everything to be tailored for this character um, and kind of done in such a way that she could then come off as Mrs. Potts in her own right without me trying to almost like navigate this with the costume. I, I went back into having her kind of guide, um, her body shape guide the feel of this. Um, so yeah, it, it was almost like starting backwards, figuring out the base first, which elements can I then take off for that, um, glorious ballad. And then from there, how can we dress her back up and then also reveal her at the very first time with all these elements. Um, and I really wanted to take a fashion risk here, um, and make it a little bit more, um, fashion forward than theatrical yet at the same time, still using the details and the format of like using the fabricated and the foams and, you know, all the sculpts to make it a little bit more theatrical. This um, this version adds something really unique to the story too in the the rose petals that kind of come to life as these dancers. And they their costuming kind of 
exists as a separate because they're kind of like this otherworldly uh, right. mystical element. So how was the approach different for, for those dancers? You know, um, because the focus was to do something very unique um, and to show this beautiful storyline with the rose through complete movement of dance, um, I had to adapt to that. So this is where choreography kind of led my way into figuring out the proper way um, to make this work. And it started out with, you know, let's make these beautiful like silk skirts that kind of come along and they represent the petals. And then throughout kind of this rehearsal process, to me, it felt like less was more. Um, so between myself and uh, Philip Jabib, who's the choreographer with this, uh, with Mackenzie Dustman, we kind of decided that it was important to make it as bare and raw as possible and let the movement speak for itself. Um, so from there, I kind of used all of my detail into creating these beautiful body suits and kind of creating as much drape as almost effect of a second skin rather than building out the body, um, which allowed them to do all the intricacy. And you see this like beautiful storyline being told through movement. Um, and that's where I felt like I was more of a support system there than trying to, you know, take over with the costume. Yeah. Well, we have to talk about Josh Groban's uh, yes. Beast costume too, <laughs> because it is, uh, it's such an amazing reveal when he steps out with that. And it's this huge larger than life costume puppet hybrid that he's in you have done a lot of larger than life work on, right. on mass singer so did that <laughs> kind of prepare you for this challenge a little bit um i i've had a lot of experience building out with foam and of course it's the big masks and this time around um my very first conversation with john chu was about broadway and, you know, we were kind of discussing how Lion King did a lot of their beautiful costuming done through elements of puppetry, whether it was mobile or um, technical type of builds. And that kind of stuck to me. And that was almost a, a year ahead of getting into um, the Beast costume. So after doing so much research, I was like looking into different ways that we could do this. And I proposed, okay, are we going to do, you know, any kind of, are we creating a mask for him? Are we doing kind of like special effects makeup, um, prosthetics? Like what avenue are we seeing this character live in? And then there was one moment where um, I went back to that initial conversation of like, what if we did something that was so different and so unique and created a costume where we see the character, we see Josh at the same time, we see this representation that's unlike anything we've ever seen before. So that's when I pitched the idea of creating um, kind of mobile puppet that we would then have you know Josh do proper training to figure out how to do it and that was something that even our, our on our end building it was pretty <laughs> intense trying to figure out how to keep it lightweight how to give it the dimensions that we need how to have this character stand out and, and represent the beast but at the same time have um something so simple and you see like right through the character you see that there's a story of entrapment and a spell and that was kind of like my thinking process of how do we do this like not an encompassed puppet but almost like a hollow shell of a beast yet at the same time having two characters live in front of our eyes at the same time um and that's when you know I had full uh, support from producers and our team to go forward with this idea and it took us about two and a half months to build this guy out and it, uh, Josh was just like so phenomenal when I introduced the idea to him like he was like okay let's do this and he was just incredible with you know proper training and with our team figuring out you know how to really navigate this character because you're literally carrying this mass on your body at the mm -hmm. same time navigating larger than life feet and like all the mobility that comes along with puppeteering it um so yeah it, it, it was also like one of those things we took a risk you know I didn't know if people are going to love the idea or not so much relate to it, um, but I think overall it was a, a pretty impactful way to build this character and something I, I hope, you know, um, was received very well because I feel like we did achieve that unique factor of doing something so exquisite and different. Yes, well, it's great because with the Beast, you get to still see him emote uh, mm -hmm. while he's in that form. Um, how long did it take him to figure out how to move the costume? Because you know, it seems so um, intricate. 
Right. Um, he was so wonderful because I, we kind of had him along the process. So I was able to share the very first fitting with him when it was just the shell of the costume before the head was even put on. So he could understand what he's working with. We could understand what needs we need to, you know, or requirements we need to achieve before we proceed the build. Um, so he was probably in rehearsals for about, I would say, two weeks. And then, of course, like our team was right there by his side. My fabricators that built the costumes were right there. You know, we were navigating through this. And overall, it was a pretty incredible experience. Like once he got it, he was the beast. So um, it, he made me very proud because I feel like we achieved something wonderful together. And he definitely embraced every part of it. Well, this is a, another, uh, this Beauty and the Beast celebration is another area for you that's this great like live spectacle um, that you work in quite a lot. You've won right. six Emmys and they're all for <laughs> some sort of, you know, it's the Super Bowl, it's the Grammys, it's the Mass Singer. What is it about this type of arena and that work that really connects with you? You know, I still can decide. I don't know if I just work so well under pressure and these short time frames. Like when I'm in it, I, I'm like, oh my gosh, like why, you know, here's another one. You've got <laughs> two months to pull this together. But there's something about um, <clears throat> my way of designing where I am, if I'm limited on time and I'm limited on this creative space, the best of me comes out. I don't know what it is. It's almost like I escape reality. I understand it. Um, I dive deep into um, the people that I work with, the talent that's right in front of me. I'm excited to bring something different to life. And um, I truly love it. And I think I'm constantly learning through every project that I take on to where I get to work with the best of the best. So from there, it's like, why not take this opportunity to just grow and deliver something that's unimaginable. And sometimes when the show is done, I don't even know how we did it, to be honest with you. Like once that like rap call happens, if you ask me to replicate some of the things I've done in the past, including like um, at this particular live, I, I don't even think I could do it again. It's just something that happens in the moment. And once I understand something and once there's clear communication between what the director's expectations are, what the team would like to see, um, and also having that trust, I think, in my ability and having the creative freedom to really bring something new to the table, it, it pushes me that much further to just like never stop. Like I was adding details, um, even with Belle's dress, um, it was the last thing I worked on and my, it was like the night before we had to film it and my entire team went home and I sat there with the gown, just staring at it and trying to figure out if there's anything else that's missing. Is there anything that I can actually add myself? Um, and I think that's what to me makes my work so special is I'm there touching every single costume that goes on the stage the very last minute. Well, it all came together fabulously. It's a Thanks. wonderful work in this. So <laughs> thank you so much, Marina. And for everyone who's watching, make sure you subscribe to Gold Derby. Stick with us throughout the rest of this season. Thank you again, yeah. Marina. Thank you so much, Sam. I really appreciate it. Have a beautiful day.